لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين القائل في كتابه المبين والذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين والصلاة والسلام على ناصه الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وتابعين له بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أفتاق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حد حد محمد وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشرب أمور محتتاتها وكل محتتة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة أخر ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله on this blessed day يوم الجمعة I wanted to do a reminder for myself and for others بإذن الله تعالى and we chose to title this talk it doesn't bring you any closer to the sunnah uh, because you claim to hate bid'ah and we're going to explain or elaborate inshallah ta'ala why we have chosen this particular topic and why we chosen this title another title that i wanted to call this talk inshallah ta'ala is how to properly uh hate bid'ah how to properly hate bid'ah innovation and unfortunately especially in our time we are drawn to what we are drawn to and one of the things that we find many people are drawn to is controversy or they are drawn to something that gets them fiery something that stings them up and get them get the blood flowing and one of those issues no doubt is innovation but it's a proper way that innovation is to be addressed and it's a proper way that mandates that innovation be disliked and hated, but you must have a requirement, you must have something before it in order for you to get to that level. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in his book, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا كَمَثَلِ الَّذِينَ يَنْعِكُ بِمَا لَا يَسْمَعُ إِلَّا دُعَاءً وَنِدَاءً in this verse, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, The example of those who disbelieve are like the example of the one who shout to the sheep. The one who was the shepherd, he shouted to the sheep, to one who cannot hear them. He cannot hear his, he cannot hear except with cries and shouts. And he cannot hear them except with cries and shouts. Summun, Allah said they are summun, bukmun, umyun, fala ya'akilun. They are deaf, dumb, and blind, and they do not understand. Shaykh Islam and Taymiyyah, rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi, he says when it comes to the ayats in the Quran, even though those ayats might be pertaining to the kufar in general, it does not stop it or prevent it from uh, being applicable to any believer who falls into these characteristics that the ayat is addressing generally the non-believers, but if the believers fall into it, it still can be applied to them as well. Also, Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Inna sharra dawabi inda Allah yisummu al-bukmu al-ladhina la yaqinun wa law alim Allahu fihim khayran la asma'ahum وَلَوْ أَسْمَعْهُمْ لَتَوَلَّوْا وَهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَجِيبُوا لِلَّهِ وَلِلرَّسُولِ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَأَنَّهُ and these following verses, Allah Jalla says, Indeed, in Sharrud Dawab, the, the worst of beasts, the worst living beasts in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal is the deaf, dumb, and those who can what do not understand. Allah said, The worst of the living beasts 
in the sight of Allah is the deaf and the dumb and those who do not understand. Allah said, have you known any good in them? He would have made them listen. And have you made them listen? They would have did nothing but turned away in aversion. O you who believe, answer the call. Istajibu, answer or respond to Allah and to his messenger. When they call you, يحيكم, to that which gives you life. To that which gives you life. And know that Allah comes between a man and that of his heart. Meaning, he prevents him from any decisions that he would make within his heart. Uh, Allah Jalla comes and know that you will be turned back to Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala collectively. These following verses we wanted to use this as an introduction to our talk, bi'ithnillah. And the reason why we say that is because notice in both of the in both of the verses that we quoted, the concept of deaf, dumb, and blind is just not applicable to non-believers. All right? You must have ilm, okay? Knowledge is a must in everything. So even when it comes against the claim of hate and bid'ah, then how can you claim to hate bid'ah, right? You have to properly know how to hate bid'ah. That's have to be upon ilm, not hate bid'ah upon jahl, as many people are. Unfortunately, you will find most people in today's time, they feel as though they are from the Ahlu Sunnah because they quote a lot and you hear them, this one is a Sufi, this one is a Maturi, this one is Khwarji, this one is etc, etc. And when you go back and really do some, re some examination, and the person that's making the claim that this one is this and this one is that, and you ask the individual, do he understand his own deen, his own creed, or do he even understand what a Sufi is and what these people that he's talking about, do he even understand what is the issue that they went wrong with? You will find out that most cases, the one who shout and scream at the people who are upon innovation, the person who's upon innovation is more stronger in his innovation than the person who is screaming that he hate the innovation upon his understanding of the sunnah. And this is a big mistake because the people of the past, they weren't just loosely hating, hating bid'ah. It was something that was inside them that required them to hate bid'ah, but it was based upon something that was what? They had ilm of sunnah. They had ilm of deen, which requires that which goes against the deen and which goes against the sunnah to be repelled and be to be refuted. You will find an individual in today's time, you will go to their website or you'll go to their page, whether it's on social media, and you'll see all of the posts of Ahl al-Sunnah, and we hate the Shiites, and we this, 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 and that, and all of it, even Ahmed said, or you find these athars, right? But the individual himself or herself, when you have a conversation with them, they don't have one iota of any kawaid memorized, Fahman Tamaman understood in their own deen. But yet you see them posting this up and you think, ah, look at this person, Sahib al Sunnah. This person loved the Sunnah. La! This is not the way it is. You can't make mere claims. As we said the verse earlier, you can't make mere claims. Allah Jalla Wala says, Allah Jalla mentions that when you see them, they appearance, their outward appearance, it amazes you. This person's upon the sunnah. Look what they share. Look what they, look what they post. Look what they quote. See how they hate the Shia. See how they hate this? See how they hate that? Upon the sunnah to ujibaka wa in tasma' li kawlihim And when you hear them speak, you give an ear to it. You listen. Ka'annahum musannada But they are as blocks of propped up wood. They are hollow in the inside. Because when you start to have a real conversation about what is bid'ah, they don't know. When you start to have a real conversation, the difference between bid'ah 
and mukhalaf for sunnah they don't know. When you start to have a real conversation between a person who was a practitioner of bid'ah and the one who was an inventor of bid'ah, is it a separation or is it the same? They don't know. When you start asking them real conversations about where did the people fall short at in their understanding, is bid'ah just act of worship? Is it just actions or do it fall in koliya statement? Do it fall in eritikadiyya in belief? Do it fall in fikriya in, in thinking and pondering? Do it fall in any of these? When you start asking them these questions, they don't know. Allah said, "Ka'annahum musannada." This is the characteristics of the hip of, 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 of the hypocrites, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for protection from hypocrisy. They don't know; they're propped up wood. There's nothing in the inside that will let them know what is this or what is that. And it's amazing that you will find an individual who screamed that they love the Sunnah, but they don't have one book, not one book memorized of the Sunnah that can explain the Sunnah. That can understand the sunnah. They don't have one. And then we're tired. Not one. So if you really want to be a person who hate bid'ah, then you must understand the following. You must know sunnah. I'm going to say it again. If you hate bid'ah, you must know sunnah in order to properly hate bid'ah. We don't hate bid'ah upon ignorance. We hate bid'ah upon what? Upon ilm. We understand why it should be refuted. We understand. And as Sheikh Tahir, Afidhullah, um, beloved brother, he mentioned a beautiful point in his class, Akita Tawasatiya, in the introduction, Ibn Taymiyyah's book. And he said that, unfortunately, when it came, to, he said, when the scholars were teaching and they laid down the books of Iratikad, the books of belief, they laid them down for two purposes, the main two purposes. There's many purposes, but the main two purposes. One was to establish taqreer, yani al i'tikad al ahl sunnati wa jama'ah. One was to establish the belief of ahl sunnati wa jama'ah, meaning to establish what we supposed to believe in and how to properly believe in it with its proof and evidence. That's number one. Number two, it was to refute the innovation and the distortion from the people who have distorted the names and attributes of Allah, the people who have distorted the deen of Allah, the people who have tried to come and change it, whether it's way from belief, whether it's way from actions or statements, they was refuting it. He said the problem, and this is his statement, that we find is that many people begin by teaching the books of rudud, of refutation, before teaching the books of taqreer, of establishing iman within our hearts. Of our belief. So tell me, is this not true? For years in our masajids, we have been learning here and there, alhamdulillah, may Allah reward the brothers. We have been learning about Aqidah and this and that, but we really have been sticking with us, and you can see it in our actions and our attitudes and the way that we behave. It's bid'ah, hate bid'ah. This is what's been sticking with us. So we get those books, and this is what, what, what sticks with us. But we don't lock down the kawar to even get to that point. So I ask you, how can you hate bid'ah and you don't know what it is? How can you hate bid'ah and you don't know what the sunnah is? I ask you. Because if Iman Ahmed hate bid'ah, he was knowledgeable. He was a faqih. He was a muhaddith. A million hadith were memorized already. He understood what, what the hadith was. So he could, he could hate it because it went against what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was upon. It went against the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It went against the sunnah. It went against the ayat or the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla. He understood that. But you, saying you hate this and you hate that, but you have no ilm. Come on, man. SubhanAllah Azim. You have no ilm. You have to stop this, man. Mere claims. Mere claims. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us in the Quran about the blameworthiness that we have to be just, adil, even against ourselves and even against our loved ones and even against anything. We have to be just, even if it's against a person upon innovation. Even if against the innovator, you have to be just. And I don't often quote him, but I will quote him today. In his famous book, which was known as the book where he explained Nukta Rijal, when explaining the refutation of the criticism of men, Sheikh Rabir, he mentioned a beautiful point. And Hafidhullah, he says that when it comes to the innovator, 
you still have to be just. And he used the verse in the book of Allah, where Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Isra, وَأَوْفُوا الْكَيْلَ إِذَا كِلْتُمْ وَزِنُوا بِالْكِصْفَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا In this verse, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, and weigh with a equal way. Okay? He says, وَأَوْفُوا الْكَيْلَ And weigh with an equal way, meaning be just. Weigh the justice and be just. Allah said, Bil kistas al mustaqim, with that which is just, and weigh with balance, equal balance. So you cannot be an individual who come along and just because a person is upon something which you are in upon, that it gives you the right to go overboard and beyond. Do you understand? This doesn't mean that you got to mention the good things that they did in order not to refute the bad things. That's not what I'm talking about. Muaz and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about intense of, you don't have to say because so-and-so is a non-believer, I, I don't have to treat, him, treat that person with any iota of respect as interaction and how that's supposed to be done. Look, you cannot say because so-and-so is a Sufi or so-and-so is a Shiite, I have the right now to do X, Y, and Z. No, no. You have to do it all in this proper context. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu kunu kawwameena lillahi shuhadaa abil kisbo wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu i'adilu huwa aqrabu littaqwa wa attaqu allaha inna allaha khabirun in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth chapter of the Quran, Allah Jalla wa He says, O oh, you who believe, just in those the people of the Iman, He says, You have to kunu kawwamina lillahi shuhada. That you have to stand out for Allah as witnesses, just witnesses. Okay? Then He describes what that just witnesses is about. Allah Azza wa continues, He said, Wala do not let the hatred and the animosity and the, and, the, and, the, and the enmity that you have for people cause you not to be just. You understand? Just because you hate innovation doesn't give you the right not to be just with the person of innovation. And if you go back to the biography of Ibn Taymiyyah, you will see that most of his opponents, the people who were upon innovation that he were refuting, he still had a level of respect for them. That it wasn't like he hated them. It was reported that even from one of his students that when so-and-so had passed away, he went to the person's house and told the wife that he'd give his condolence for an individual who was a known innovator. You understand? I'm not talking about this stuff you think what you think innovation is. I'm talking about people who really was distorting the law's names and attributes. A person who really was calling to it and inventing that. One who was staunch enemies of him, he still showed a level of respect. Where is it at with us? Where is this level at? We don't have a proper understanding. If you're going to teach bid'ah, then teach the proper understanding of it. Allah said, do not let your hatred or enmity of a person cause you or swerve you from not being just. Allah say be just that is nearer to taqwa to piety what taqwa and fear Allah inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun indeed Allah is well acquainted with all that you do so it becomes clear that even with the people of innovation we have to also be just bi idnillahi ta'ala now now we all know of the famous hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha her mother she mentioned that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that من أحتدى في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد Famous hadith I mean, actually the starch brothers from amongst us, they probably memorized this hadith Alhamdulillah, it's good It's a beautiful hadith It's sound, it comes in Bukhari wa Muslim She said whoever, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever introduce something into this affair of ours that is not from it, would have it rejected. And then the narration or the version that comes in Muslim, Man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fahuwarad. Whoever does an action that is not in accordance to our command will have it rejected also. Sheikh Salih Fuzan Afidullah on his commentary, this tremendous hadith, he says, talking about the first hadith, he says, 
when it says whoever introduce or, or invent something into our deen, meaning legislate for us. Okay? Aujida ibadatan lam yakun laha dalilu min kitab Allah wa sunnatin rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning a person will introduce an act of worship which cannot be supported with any evidence from the book of Allah or the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alright? Now pay attention why he's going to say this. He says, لِأَنَّ الْإِبَادَةِ تَوْكِفِيَةً لَا يُعْمَلُ إِلَّا بِمَا دَلَى عَلَيْهِ دَلِيلٌ مِنْهَا He said because when it comes to act of worship, okay, those act of worship are tawkifiyya. And I think many of the people who claim sunnah in our time don't understand this. They might think they understand this, but they really don't. I'm going to give you an example. It is restricted to texts. It's restricted. Act of worship is restricted. It's not how you feel. It's not what you think. It's not what you perceive. It's not what you have extracted. It is restricted to texts. Which texts? The Quran and the Sunnah. But can you, who is an army, a person who doesn't understand Istanbul, a person who doesn't understand Wajr al-Istidlal, a person who doesn't understand any of these terms, go inside the book of Allah, pick up a verse, pick up an ayah, and say, this is the evidence I am going to use for my evidence. La, it's not for you. You can't do that. Why? Because the people of innovation, the ones you claim to hate, this is what they have fallen into. They were taking the verses, as you see from the ulama explaining, they were taking the verses and saying that they meant this and using them for this. But the ulama, they went back and said, no, there have to be a reason or a sabab, a cause that show you that that verse can be used in the way that you're trying to use it. It has to be restricted. So it's called istidlal. In the books of Usul al-Fiqh, they break this down. How to use a verse or hadith to be an act of evidence. You don't have no knowledge in that. You don't have nothing in that. You cannot go in the book of Allah yourself. You cannot go in the hadith of the Messenger of Allah so so yourself and use it now any way that you want. It's not based off of that. It's toki fiya. It's restricted to text. So Shaykh Rathameen, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, he brought a beautiful principle. Which I believe it doesn't emanate from the Sheikh. This principle, as you see, has been passed down from the scholars of the past. And that is, he was making a tafriq, a distinction between the people of innovation, the true people of innovation, versus the people of the Sun. And he said that it's a principle. And he mentioned that is first, awal is the dal, all right? Thumma taqtakit, thumma ta'mal. He says, first it is to have evidence. Then base your belief off the evidence. Then act according to that. He says the opposite now is that the people of Hawa, of desires, what you find they would do is they will act first. Then they will go look for an evidence to try to substantiate their action, to try to prove or validate their action. And they're based a belief off of that. I think you need to understand what he's saying. Many of us, we be honest with ourselves, we do this. We gotta be truthful, man. Many of us, we do this. We know we don't know no evidence on the issue. We know we haven't studied anything on the issue. But we have a strong feeling within ourselves that this is the right thing to do when it comes to the deen. So we act henceforth. We're no different than what Allah Jalla says, alayhim wala We're no different from the people of Dalim, because that's what they did. They act without any knowledge. No, we don't base our belief and act first. We have evidence. It call Allah, call Rasulullah. Bang. That's what it says. I base my belief off of that. My action now is going to move accordingly. Huh, that action is also restricted. How your fahm of that text is restricted. Kaif, how? Because now your understanding of what you think, you perceive, you understand, got to be based off the ashab, of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Huh, off the salaf. It has to be based off of that. Then the action, the tatbiq of it, have to also be based off the way that they practice it. Allahu Akbar. So you see that? It's all restricted. So you find it amazing that someone who have all on a on a post, everybody walking around, you know, I'm, I'm Tariq al-Salafi, 
you know, uh, Sister Ju Sister Juwavia Salafia, and all of this whole extra stuff. I hate bid'ah and the people this, and they looking at people strange and everything like that. But you find when it comes to their birthdays, they lack the days of it. They celebrate it. You find when it comes to issues pertaining to what they cannot do, they don't have no fit or understanding of not doing it. They don't stay away from it. So you tell me, right? How does that make sense? How can you say you hate bid'ah, but at the same time love the noob? Huh? It's, it's something weird there, right? The people that hate Bidah, they also hate the new. So how can you say, I love Bidah, but at the same time, I love the new? No, you can't. What you want to understand is that you want to make sure that your hate and innovation is based upon ilm. You have to have knowledge. He continues, he says, Whatever the evidence or the proof did not indicate or show a proof for it, was not indicated by the proof, then it was not legislated by Allah. He said, وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يُشَرِّعُهُ فَهُوَ مُبْتَدِعٌ مُحْدِثٌ فِي الدِّينِ مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ وَعَمَلَهُ مَرَدُودٌ عَلَيْهِ لَا يُخْبَلُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ He says, and whoever seeks a nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal, with anything, no matter what that thing be, whoever seeks a nearness to Allah Jalla wa with anything, and I want you to understand, bid'ah doesn't just apply to actions. Okay, if you heard me earlier, I alluded to it. I want you to know that bid'ah applies to four things mainly, all right? And you can actually say five. Here, as Sheikh Salif was explained in another, another book of his called Darus, which is not a book, actually, he made it in a book, was the lessons that he gave into the Harum, where he explains that it falls under belief. Bid'ah can be in belief, it can be in thoughts, it can be in statements, it can be in actions. Do you understand? So, those four things that innovation can fall in all of, all of them. All four of those things that we mentioned that can actually fall in all of them. He mentioned here that whoever seeks a nearness with any of those things to get closer to Allah as a wajal, which Allah is not legislated, I mean it's not in the text, it doesn't come in the Quran or the Sunnah, right? Then this individual is a muqtadir, all right, is innovator, muhtith, one who has innovated something in the deen of Allah that was not from it, and his action would be rejected and it would not be accepted with Allah who jalla wa ala. He says because worship and the rest of the acts are not correct or sound except with two conditions. One, it had to be based off ikhlas, and we should know this, sincerely for Allah Azza Secondly, it must be matabi'ah, following according to the Sunnah of the Muhammad Sallallahu He says so if a person was to come with an act of ibadah, worship, which was innovated or introduced, laysa fiha shirk, but it does not contain in any um, shirk. Hulaha khali satalillah. But all of it was done sincerely for Allah's sake. Well, I can have some Sharia to Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, but however, it wasn't legislated by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or it wasn't from the legislation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For here, it still will be considered bid'ah and innovation, and it will be rejected. So he's just trying to get you to understand that you can come with all the ikhlas you want, all the sincerity you want. If you don't have the conformity to the Sunnah, then it's going to be rejected. You can come with all the Sunnah you want. If it doesn't have any conformity to any, any uh, ikhlas, sincerity to Allah, then it would be rejected. As the famous statement we should know, mentioned from one of the imams, and I believe this was Abu um, Qad Abu Iyad. He mentioned this famous statement that he said about the statement of Allah Azza wa Jalla in Surah Al Mulk, right? Khalaq al Hayat al Mawt, right? Allah Jalla wa Ala is the one who created you, and He would Jalla Mawt wal Hayat. And he had made life and death to test you to see which one of you will be best in deeds. He said that whoever does an act that is sincere but is in opposition to the sunnah, then it is considered to be what? Innovation. And whoever does an act which is according to the sunnah but is in opposition of sincerity, then this individual is what? It's considered to be shirk. Do you understand? You have to have both of them present. So the shirk, he says here, it is innovation. Nonetheless, you have to have those two conditions. The first condition can be found in the hadith of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Actions are judged by intentions. Each person get that which he or she attended. That's the proof of ikhlas. And as for the second proof of following the sunnah of the Prophet then it's the hadith we're talking about in discussion. Alhamdulillah. I'm not going to do this whole shah. I want to mention another point that he brings from the second hadith. He says, as far as the second narration, then... 
what's to be understood from that is that وَإِنَّمَا اتَّبَعَ مَنْ أَحْتَدَ أَمَلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَسَلَمْ فَعَمِلَ هُوَ بِهِ صَارَ مُبْتَدِعًا فَمَنْ أَمِلَ بِبِدْعِ فَهُوَ مُبْتَدِعٌ وَإِنْ لَمْ يُحْتِثْهَا هُوَ So he says here that whoever introduced something that Allah has not legislated it and in the second narration it says لَمْ يُحْتِثْ He is not the one يعني, who introduced it or innovated He only followed what has been introduced Okay, you only follow what has been introduced. He says, an action. Laysa alayhi amr rasul. He did an act which was not commanded by the Messenger of Allah. Then he says, fa'amila huwa bihi sara mubtadi'an. Then this action of his will become by way of, can make the individual become a way of innovative. Faman amila bi bid'i. And whoever does an act of innovation, for huwa mubtadi'un. Then this innovation, even if he did not, the one who does not um, innovate it. He said the benefit that we get from this narration is that no one can come say, I didn't introduce anything into the deen. No one can say, I'm not the innovator. I didn't make that up. I'm only following what somebody did before me. Meaning I didn't make that up at all. I'm only following what someone's coming He says, we say to him, even if you did not in introduce it, you're following it, right? Those come before you. He said, "From Adam a bid'at, and Falayyid Jews alak and Ta'amal Abi." He says, "As long as it's considered to be innovation, then it's not permissible for you to act according to it." For the caller, "In the matter of Omas Oliya, Alam Am Tadaha," and if he says that the responsibility or the, the the sin only fall upon the person who innovated it, then we respond to him, said, "La." The innovate the, the the responsibility falls upon the one who innovated, and also upon the one who act according to it. Due to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he says, "Whoever does an act that is not in our commandment." Or the visa commandment, then you know uh, it will be rejected. So this hadith is telling us that you are what prohibited from acting according to an act of innovation. And you know that you have they have been prohibited from that which they have innovated into the deen. So how can you follow alone and act according to that action? So. It's covered from each angle. And my last point I want to bring the Ethnilai Ta'ala is that, as we mentioned before, innovation should be hate. Don't get it wrong. Shirk, bid'ah, kufr, thulu, all that is mandatory that we reject it, that we refute it, and that we hate it. That's, that's true. But it should be hate upon knowledge. Do you understand? Not hate about fame knowledge. If you really don't understand what you're hating, you don't understand why you're hating it, What's the benefit in that? What's the fatty that? There's no, there's no fatty in that. You should know why you do not like that. You understand? Why don't I? Why do I do not like that? You should have some elements, some understanding of why you don't like it. And if you want to say, okay, I can say I hate it because Allah hates it. That still requires you to have knowledge to know that Allah hates it. And if you say I hate it because the Messenger of Allah was something didn't do it, that still requires you to have knowledge that the Messenger of Allah was something didn't do it. Many of us, if we don't have knowledge, we normally lay allegations and accusations and attacks and insults on people who doesn't deserve it. And the problem is Allah covers every basis. That's why Allah Jalla says to you what? If a person, a fasik, was to come to you, Ja'a fasikum bibayyin, for any news, for tabayyin, Allah says for tabayyin, He says to what? He says, verify that news. Why do you have to verify that news? Unless, Allah mentioned in the verse, we saw the Hutarat, you harm someone who doesn't deserve it. You cause harm upon a person who doesn't deserve it. I give you a perfect example. An individual goes inside a masjid. He see an individual praying with his hands beneath his navel. All right? It's beneath his navel. And he has his right hand or his left, and he's praying with his hands beneath his navel. The individual, if he doesn't understand the haq, and he don't understand the issue, or if there's room, or this is a thick issue or not, he's going to assume that that, indivi that individual who's praying like that is an innovator. That person is following innovation. And he's going to have something in his heart towards the person who's praying with his hand beneath his name. But the problem is, he has no right to do so. And you might say, oh, Yes, he do. The Prophet was selling prayed with his right hand, on his left hand, on his chest. And wrong. 
The Prophet ﷺ said we have been commanded, look into the hadith, that we place our right hand is on our left. But there's iktilaf on where is the chest. It's iktilaf. And all of the narrations that mention it's supposed to be on the chest is dark, is weak. But if you haven't understood this and haven't studied this and don't know this and have the knowledge, you're going to look at the individual who pray with his hands beneath his, his navel as incorrect. Now, I'm not telling you to pray with your hands beneath your navel. That's not what I want you to get from my talk. I pray with my hands, right hands, but on my chest. That's not what I'm But I don't want you to level that person to be an innovator because you don't understand the issue. I'll give you another example that many people you need knowledge and it's important so you can properly hate something. Don't hate something off of ignorance. Hate something off of knowledge. Another thing, you might go to a masjid and they call the ikama in a different way. They call the ikama and they call the adhan in a different way. And the first thing creep into your heart is that, whoa, where, where, where I'm at? You don't call the adhan like that. The ikama isn't called like that. And you creep something in your heart and you hate them. And then you go out and you tell your brother or you tell your sister, yeah, I was at this shout out masjid. Yeah, they're pond innovation down there. What did they do? Yeah, they was calling me a dime, man. I, I, I didn't know what they was doing, right? But then a person who has knowledge, he says to you, well, brother, are you aware that the Prophet ﷺ had four mu'adhans? He had two in Medina and he had two in Mecca. And he taught each one of them different. Are you aware that the Adan can have 17 statements? Are you aware that, you, that the Adan can also have 19 statements? Are you aware of any of these different things that can take place? You might don't know. Why? Because you haven't studied fiqh. You don't know that the deen is divided into two categories. The belief in Allah is a wajal and the halal wa haram. But because you don't have ilm, you think that you're going to base it off because so-and-so doesn't go to a certain master. And tell me this is not our state right now. Tell me this ain't the truth. I don't see you at Germantown. I don't see you at Master Bass, Ben Bass. I don't see you at Master This. I don't see you at Master That. And you automatically give that person a label because you don't see them at that master. And, and, and that's a mistake. Wallahi, tallahi, tallahi, that's a mistake. That's not pan ilm. The individual stood on the member and said, there are only four masjids or four Salafi massages in, 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 in Philadelphia or in the tri-state area. That statement of his was incorrect. You're wrong, brother. To make a statement like that, you're wrong. You're not Allah as a wajala. You don't know every masjid that claims to follow the sunnah or not. You're wrong. This is why we have to make sure we start learning Ilm, which brings me to my next point. Inshallah ta'ala, I can't go long. I'm just going to mention these last lot of poetry here. He mentioned here, he says, وَجَعَلْ جُلُوسَكَ بَيْنَ صَحْبِ مُحَمَّدٍ وَتَلَقَّ مَعْهُمْ عَنْهُ بِالْإِحْسَانِ وَتَلَقَّ عَنْهُمْ مَا تَلَقَّوْهُمْ وَعَنْهُمْ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ وَالْإِرْفَانِ أَفَلَيْسَ فِي هَذَا بَلَاغُ مَسَافِرٍ يَبْغِ الْإِلَاهَ وَجَنَّةَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ لَا تَنَوْشُ بَيْنَ هَذَا الْخَلْقِ مَا كَانَتْ تَفَرْقُكُ قَطْتُ فِي الْحُسْبَانِ In these last line of poetry, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya, he brings some tremendous points or beautiful points for us to understand. Tayyip. And that is, first and foremost, he says, وَجَعَلُ جُلُوسَكَ بَيْنَ الصَّحْبِ مُحَمَّدٍ وَتَلَقَّ مَعَهُمْ عَنْهُ بِالْإِحْسَانِ Shaykh Uthameenie says, اِجْعَلْ كَأَنَّكَ مَعَ الصَّحَابَ تَسْمُوا كَلَامَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ He said in this line of poetry, make اِجْعَلْ كَأَنَّكَ as if you were sitting with the Sahabas. Ibn Qayyim says, وَجْعَلْ جُلُوسَكَ Make your sitting between the companions of Muhammad and along with them, you are taking the knowledge from them with goodness, right? So, Shaykh Uthameen, he's saying, what he's saying is that make your sitting as if you are sitting with the Sahabas. That you are hearing the Prophet words. As if you are looking at his actions. In order for you to be like them in following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَهَذِهِ فَائِدَةُ نَظِيمًا And Shaykh Rathameen, he said, this is a tremendous benefit. اِجْعَلْ جُلُوسَ كَمَا أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ سَلَّمُ وَسَلَّمُ عَلَى هَذَا فَلَا تَسْأَلُوا عَمَّا لَمْ يَسْأَلُوا أَنْ Pay attention now. How do you protect yourself? 
How do you properly hate innovation? How do you properly avoid innovation? How do you properly adhere to the sunnah? How do you properly instruct yourself? Then you make your sitting as if you were sitting with the messenger. What sitting is he talking about? He's talking about the julus al-ilm, majlis al-ilm. You make your sitting. You're sitting in the circles of knowledge. You're sitting when you're beginning to benefit like you're sitting alone with the companions and you're taken directly from them. But how do you do that? Let's go back earlier in the poem. If you want to go back early into the poem, you're going to see what he's going to say. He says, It's he says, follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in statement and in action and also in belief. As, as Sheikh al mentioned in this, um, uh, his uh, explanation. And know that the statement does not exceed or go outside of the Quran. But take from the Sahihain, Bukhari wa Muslim, Alladayna, these two things, Humali iqdid deen, that which carries the, 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 the deen by the permission of Allah jalla wa ala, and the iman, wa sitatani. Uh, they are both just balanced. Take from Bukhari wa Muslim. hakaman And make them both a judge. And do not judge against both of these things, which are the origins of evidence. The statements of the Prophet the actions of the Prophet the solemn attacks or approval of the Prophet the Quran. Do not drew, rule against it with the statement of Fulan and Alan. Uh, Pay attention now. So you make your sitting along with them because you're going to be reading from Bukhari wa Muslim. You're going to be Ahlu Hadithi. You're going to go and learn and educate yourself with the statements of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how you're going to become strong. The Messenger didn't say that. The Messenger didn't do that. The Messenger didn't do, say this, uh, uh, give a solid tax or approval for that. The Messenger didn't do this. And you're going to be like, as Ibn Uthaymin uh, is saying, it's going to be like you're listening to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just as the companions was, and you're seeing his actions. You can do that by reading Bukhari wa Muslim. You pay attention. The Shaykh continues. He says, you do not ask, pay attention now, about an issue or anything that they did not ask about. I want to repeat that again. You do not ask about an issue, but we're in the 21st century. There are some things that wasn't done during their time. You do not ask about an issue that they did not ask about. I want to repeat it again. You do not ask about an issue you want to say, brother, you blind following the Sahabas. La hadha haram. That's not permissible. Qala Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, if any one of you want to follow anyone, then let him follow those who have already passed. For indeed, they are safe. Following someone now who isn't safe because we don't know what he would die upon. But they are already passed, meaning the Salaf has already passed, the companions have already passed. We know what they were upon and we know what they had died upon. There is safety in that. Talking about blind following. Fala. He said, Fala. He says, Tas'alu amma lam yas'alu an. Don't ask about that which they did not ask about. Wala tuhdid ma lam yakuluhu. Do not innovate something or bring something about which they did not speak on. Wali had a nahnu nan takitu ala ba'd al ikhwanina muthbitina li sifati an yatamaku fith batiha. Pay attention to what he's getting ready to say. Because if you don't understand this issue, you don't properly hate bid'ah. It's just a mere claim from you. Because you don't even know where it started from. You don't even understand how it even happened. Huh? Pay attention. He mentioned here, he says, for this reason, we criticize some of our brothers, those who have affirmed some attributes for Allah as a wajal, and they tend to go deep and delve deep into this issue as far as affirming attributes for Allah. And they say, in the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called, they said it comes in the hadith that the Messenger of Allah said, In Allah la yumillu hatta tamillu. Indeed, Allah does not turn. The Allah does not turn until you turn. The Allah does not turn until you turn. And they see this hadith, which is collected by Bukhari in the book of Iman. 
He says, فَهَلْ نُثْبِتُ Shaykh Uthaymin says, فَهَلْ نُثْبِتُ لِلَّهِ يَلْمَلَ الْأَلَّهِ He says, from this hadith, do we affirm or do we confirm that Allah Jalla wa Ala, He turns, that this is an attribute for Him or not? نَقُولُ He said, we respond by saying, الصَّحَابَةُ مَا ذَهَبُوا يَرَاجِعُونَ الرَّسُولَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ سَلَطُ وَسَلَامِ فِي هَذَا That the, we did not find in any of the hadith that the companions with Allah Ta'ala Alayhi when they heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi say this hadith, we do not find them saying the same thing you're saying. We do not find them going back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi with this issue. Look what he says. He says, Arafu marad wa maqsood. They understood what was intended from when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said it. He says, wa sakatu amma sawaadhari. And they were actually silent concerning anything other than that. Arafu anna marad al-rasood. They knew what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi intended. Anahu mahma aktharutum. من العمل فالله تعالى يجازيكم عليه. No matter how many actions that a person does that you do from actions, no matter whatever it is you reach, know that Allah جل وعلا is the one who can reward or compensate you concerning it. ولم يسألوا and they did not ask هل الله يوصف بالمال لا أو لا يوصف. They did not ask the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from this hadith. يا رسول الله is the attribute of Allah can he be attributed with turning or not? They didn't ask this question. He said, He said, many issues like this, this type of type that he's talking about. He says, but many people from the people who go deep or delve deep into these issues, you can find many examples. The Sahabas, the Sahabas, they are those whom, and by the grace of Allah, they are better than us, and they are the most diligent us in seeking Qayyim. And it was from among them, anyone from among them who could uh, answer, meaning, and with them, they had the one who was able to answer them, and he was the Messenger of Allah, they still did not ask him. So you want to tread upon their path. You understand that? You want to tread upon their path. So the next part, he says, How can I take from the companions? They're not here. We have many people today, when you hear them, alhamdulillah, they say, how can I take from the companions? They're not here, they're not with us, right? He says, you take from the companions by the Senate. He said, we have the Senate, alhamdulillah. And many of y'all know what the Senate is, that is the chain. We have the chain, by the mission of Allah, wa we have the Senate. He says, Hadi al ummah hafidullahu deena hafid Senate. Allah Jalla wa Ala preserved and protected this Ummah of Muhammad by the chain. Do you know what he mean by the chain? He's going to say it. Haddathana Fulan, and Fulan and Fulan, as Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi, the great Imam. What did he say? He says, Walawla Isnadu. If it wasn't for the Isnad, any person can say what they want to say. Name your men. When the Sahabas was alive, they didn't have to say that because all of the companions was Udul. If, the message, if one companion told another group of people or told another group of people, they didn't have to go back and say, well, did the Prophet ﷺ say that? Because they're not going to lie on the Prophet ﷺ. But after that, when the men start to come up and they start to add things in, they say, no, name your men. Haddathana, akbarana, sami'na. Name your men. These were the people of Ahlu Hadith. Not people that we want to just, these are real people of Hadith. They understood it, they listened to it, they knew if it wasn't from it, that's the ilm that they had. They didn't claim to hate innovation. It was already mandatory. The messenger didn't say that. They knew. They went over the hadith. They understood that this wasn't understood from it. They stuck to these formats. He said, that's how they know. Had to tassil rasul And to reach the messenger of Allah Last but not least, I want to mention these last things so that you can understand how important it is to follow that of the messenger of Allah He says, فَرَبُّ رَبُّ الْوَاحِدُ وَكِتَابُهُ حَقٌّ وَفَحْمُ الْحَقِّ مِنْ بُهْتَانِ وَرَسُولُهُ قَدْ عَوْدَحَ الْحَقَّ الْمُبِينَ بِغَايَةِ الْإِيضَاحِ وَالْتِبْيَانِ مَا ثَمَّ عَوْدَحُ مِنْ عِبَارَتِهِ فَلَا يَحْتَاجُ سَامِعُهَا إِلَى تِبْيَانِ وَالنُّصْحُ مِنْهُ فَوْقَ كُلِّ نَصِيحَةٍ وَالْعِلْمُ مَأْخُوذٌ عَنِ الرَّحْمَانِ He says, Shikr Dimini says in these line of poetry, Ibn Al-Qayyim have painted a picture for us. And the picture that he describes in these beautiful lines of poetry is that Allah Jalla wa Ala is one. And no one would dispute that except the people who are upon deviation. But the people upon haq, they know that Allah is one. Ilahukum wa ilahu wahid. Right? He says, 
And he says that kitabuhu haqqun and that his book is the haqq. Rasuluhu haqqun and that the messenger is the haqq. Wa kitabu fahmuhu dani and the book Huh? He says, it's, the under, it's his understanding. The understanding of that book is that of the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Shaykh Ratimeen said, what did he intend by saying that Allah is one? He said, what he intend here is to prevent an individual to understand that there can be any contradictions in the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. You're not going to find no contradiction in the book of Allah. He says, because it is one. Because he is one, he said, and this book is the truth. If it's not been the truth, then it would have been inconsistent. It would have been contradictions. That was a clear sign that it wasn't the truth. Allah Jalla wa Ali tells you in the Quran, Allah says, if it not had this Quran, min gaidi, bin other bin indillah, had this Quran been from other than Allah, you have found many contradictions. What are one of the main things why people don't stay consistent to? Christianity, because the book had been tampered with. We can see many different versions, correct? Many contradictions here and there. So one of these signs that something is the truth is that you don't find any contradictions. This is what he's saying about the book of Allah. وَفَحْمُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ دَانٍ كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرُنَ الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذِكْرِ And he said that the understanding of the book of Allah is near. It's not far. Allah didn't make the comprehension of his book something obsolete that you got to delve so deep into mysticism, or you got to reach a certain level to understand the book. Allah says, nah. Nah? It's none in it. It's none in it. There's no iwajah. There's no crookedness in the book of Allah. Azawajal. He says here, indeed, we have made the Quran easy to remember. Does anyone remember? He says, as far as the Messenger of Allah, Azawajal, Ibn Uqayyim, he described three characteristics that must be done for the Messenger. He says, one, and his messenger called the Haqqul Mubin, Bigayat al Idahi wa Tibyan. That he gathered for the speech of the Prophet, that there's going to be three affairs. One, when it comes to the speech of the Messenger of Allah, his words are the clearest. They are the most eloquent. And you will not find someone who's more eloquent than him in speech. Sa'az Allah Azawajal. Ta'ib, that becomes clear. Alright? Secondly, he is the one who advises. And there's no one you will find that advise better than him. Right? No one who advise the creation better than him. Alright? Thirdly, his speech contains knowledge. And the speech of the Messenger Wasallam is taken from Ar Rahman. So that's why we know his knowledge. He says, La min koli fulan, wa la min koli fulan. It's not taken from the speech of so and so or from so and so. And we, we end it here. He says, So when you gather between the speech of the Prophet, you see that it complete these three affairs. That is knowledge, that is advice, and that is clearness, elucidation. So it becomes complete. It doesn't need anything other than that to come along. So we don't need something new along with the hadith, basically what he said. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, sufficient. Allah said, sufficient. I don't need you to come along with Fulan and Alan and Alan because we're in the 21st century and this is how it is and this is what it was. They wasn't facing these challenges. I don't need you to come with that. I don't need you to come with Shubahat, doubt to tell me that the Akita that we practice today isn't the same Akita that the companions practice because they don't have a book on Akita. La, I don't need that type of speech. You know why? Because it is the same belief system that they practice, even if they didn't write a book, author a book specifically for the Akita. La, it's still derived from their speech. And alhamdulillah, we got Bukhari with Muslim where we see the statements. And we also have many other books from Hadith. We see the statements and the actions of the companions and how they mentioned and how they understood. And their lives have been reported. Alhamdulillah. So we don't need nobody coming along telling us these crazy super huts. Oh, they didn't, you don't find no book of creed written during the time of the companions. There's not one book of creed. So in other words, we made up these book of creeds. Or in other words, it can be disputed or argued because it's man-made. Nah, Balton. It's Balton. We don't need none of that. He says here, he says, He said, because when it comes to speech, you can find that speech can have a lot of things inside it that doesn't make it complete. You can have a person who's a liar. There's a person who's, who, who, who is ignorant. And when he speaks, he's ignorant, so he cannot be trustworthy in what he's saying because he don't know, he don't know what he's talking about, right? 
You can have a person who is not, can, can barely express himself. You can't understand what he's saying. Did you hear what he just said? Or did you hear what she said? Just barely understood what's coming from it. But if you look at the speech of the Messenger of Allah, you find that these things are there. He, he, he spoke clear. He was given what they called Jawami of Kelim. It was so short. The man said to the Prophet, tell me something that no one other than you, other, that you have informed other than me, asked you for. He told him, he said, what? I meant to be led to mustaqim. Short, simple. I'll show you the explanations of these hadith. You see three pages, four pages, even books. Just the explanation to the hadith itself. But look how short the words were. Laconic speech. And then he mentioned last but not least here, he says, also what? Shigar Demin said, we're going to add a third, a fourth thing, attribute into the speech of the Prophet that Ibn Al-Qayyim didn't add it. And that is because he is truthful. We also got to know that the Prophet speech was truthful. As we get from the hadith of Abu Abdurrahman, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, even now we bring him in this fourth hadith in Al-Arbayina. Uh, uh, he mentioned that what? He says, well, masduq, masduq. That's what he said. The one who is believed and the one who is truthful. The one who is truthful and the one who is believed. The Prophet is truthful in his speech. Well, who was Siddiq? And you kuna sadiqan, because the Prophet was true. The speech of the Prophet was truthful. Allah Jalla says, Wa hawa. He does not speak of his own desires. Okay, He says, so in the speech of the Prophet, وسلم, we got four things. And I will leave you with this. One, we got in his speech, knowledge. And that knowledge is taken directly from Al Rahman. Alright? Also, we got the completion of advice. We know that the Prophet was one. Advice, and we've seen this from his biography that he would stand up until his feet get blisters, that he would constantly grieve because the people weren't getting it. This is something that we've seen from his character that he advised. That he was lucid and he was clear, his speech could be understood. And he was truthful in what he said. He said, So, Shikha, said, Do we need anything other than this? Do we need anything other than this? We need something else to look for to try to establish anything other than his speech. He said, Abadan, la. We don't need the speech of so and so and for land in our land. So I wanted to bring that today, inshallah ta'ala, to remind yourselves, brothers and sisters, it's not what you claim. You can keep posting all the stuff you want to post on your pages. You can post that you hate bid off on the top of your lungs. Well, you start learning. Get a method. Get one text. That's my challenge to you. Of the sunnah, meaning of creed, I'm talking about. The belief in Allah is the wajal. Know about it. Understand the issues at hand. People went astray because they started saying that Allah didn't have attributes. People went astray because they started saying Allah Jalla doesn't do this. People went astray because they say you can't give Allah that, or Allah Jalla has a partner, or Allah Jalla doesn't have this, or Allah does have this. This is where they really went astray at in these issues that were never even brought up during the time of the Prophet from the campaigns. But they went astray in that and they started to use their intellects and they started to whistle name. You don't know what a Sufi is. You can't even explain a Sufi. You understand? Ibn Uqayyim was a Sufi. And I said, well, what are you talking about, brother? Yes, he was a Sufi. Ibn Uqayyim was a Sufi. Alhamdulillah, Allah guided him by way of uh, his teacher, Sheikh Islam and Taymiyyah, who helped him get away from the innovative part of the Sufism, but he still remained a pure Sufi. Can you be a Sufi? What is a pure Sufi? Do you understand that term? Yeah, you can be a Sufi, but you can't be the innovative type of Sufi. All right? And that's different sects. And I have a different ideology. But if you don't understand these issues, you're going to be lost. If you don't take your time out to learn, man, get one book. We can learn about everything in the dunya. And this is why I want to end you with this last statement. I read this statement last night. It blew my mind. We can learn about anything in the dunya. We can worry about the dunya this. We keep acting as if we were made for the world and that the world wasn't made for us. This is our reality, man. This is why we're short. The world was made for us. We wasn't made for the world. We don't have to be slaves to the world. The world have to be subservient to us because that's the way Allah made it. And we're not acting like that. Look what this companion said. Abu Malik al-Ash'ari. Look what he said. He says at the time when he was on his deathbed, when death was approaching, he said, He said, He gathered his family members while he was on his deathbed. He said, Oh, Ashari family. All right? He says, Let the one who is present inform the one, let the one who is present from amongst you today inform the one who is absent. Inni submit to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, "Pay attention now. 
I heard the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Halawat al-Dunya murrat al-Akhir. Wa murrat al-Dunya halawat al-Akhir. At the time of his death, I want you to understand, when the world, when reality, realization is hitting you, when everything is at your forefront, what can you take comfort in? What can be the most heartfelt, the most sincere advice you can leave to those behind? You're getting ready to embark on this journey. Look what he remembered. Look what was in his mind. He told his family to get together. He said, I heard the messenger also said that the sweetness of this dunya is the bitterness of the hereafter. And that the bitterness of this dunya is the sweetness of the hereafter. Allahu Akbar. That the bitterness... Pay attention, the sweetness of this dunya is the bitterness of the hereafter. In other words, you're not tasting the hereafter if you're tasting the dunya. You're not tasting the hereafter if you're tasting the dunya. Do you understand? The bitterness of the hereafter. The bitterness of this dunya is the sweetness of the hereafter. This is what he was saying. This is a reminder that he left to his people when he was on his deathbed. What will you be thinking about when you die? What will be on your mind? And you don't have one text? One text about the belief in the lies of Wajah. And yet you talk about you hate bid'ah. You miss me with that. You really want to hate bid'ah? Hate it properly. Learn the sunnah. Step one. Learn the sunnah. Your belief. Learn what it is. Learn the hadith. And then you can properly hate innovation. Then you can properly warn against. Don't stick your chest up. Oh, I'm, I'm against Ahlu Bid'ah. At the same time, you all in it is new. Birthdays come around, you don't say nothing. Happy Fridays, you're saying that. This is amazing. People talk about Happy Friday. Happy Tuesday. What is these statements from? People are doing actual different stuff that you ain't supposed to be doing. Anniversaries, calling it different names, doing this and that. But yet you hate bid'ah, but you cannot stop that? Stuff that makes clear sense. Celebrating profit birthdays. Huh, innovating profit birthdays. Talking about this is a bid'ah hasana. This is something good. But yet you talking about, what are you talking about? No, it's not what you feel and how you feel. Oh, I want to do it this way. I want to do it that way. No, it's toki fee. It's restricted. Stop saying you hate bid'ah. You don't hate bid'ah. If you cannot stop yourself from doing stuff that go against the sunnah. Earlier we mentioned a concept for you. We said mukhalifa sunnah is not bid'ah. But every bid'ah is mukhalifa sunnah. I just wanted to explain that because I didn't let, make that known. Mukhalifa sunnah meaning that anything that opposes the sunnah. That meaning the Prophet Sallallahu didn't do it. It is not from him. But it doesn't make it an act of innovation. But an act of innovation is opposing the sunnah but not every person who opposes the sunnah is a person we we call it innovative from the door we don't just label that person the innovative but no doubt we all can fall into that which is mukhalifa sunnah i give you an example of that we can do an act that we deem that is correct but the prophet ﷺ didn't do it and it becomes a mukhalifa sunnah all right and one of those famous hadith that you know is when the man was praying two rakahs at the fajr all right and then, you know, Abdullah ibn Umar, he says to him, what you doing? He says, I'm praying. He says, Allah going to punish me for praying? He said, no, he's going to punish you for mukhalifa sunnah. He's going to punish you for opposing and differing with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because the Fajr prayer, the two rakaats come before, they don't come after. And you're praying them behind. Not like he's making them up, because that's permissible. But he was praying two rakaats, not to be the two rakaats for, for Fajr, but because he wants to pray how he felt like he wanted to pray. And that was mukhalifa sunnah. So Abdullah ibn Umar said, he said, no, he's not going to punish you for praying. He's going to punish you for mukhalifa sunnah because you are opposing the actual sunnah. So we want to be careful with that. And may Allah Jalla wa'ala make us truthful. Uh, inshallah ta'ala allow us to follow the sunnah and allow us to be educated by the sunnah and allow us to really learn the sunnah and allow us to have it inside us so that we can follow the sunnah inshallah ta'ala. Whatever we said that was incorrect in our translation definitely was from the weakness of myself and uh, from the shaitan. And whatever we said that was correct from Allah Jalla wa'ala. Subhanakallah wa'alaikum 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 wa'alaikum